Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast. This week, we are going to be discussing whether or not mana rocks in Commander are a scam. So, <laughs> recently, there was a little bit of controversy uh, on whether or not mana rocks are worth running in Commander. Um, there was a notable tweet in the Twitter sphere by Sven Black that said, uh, basically, it's a scam, and and they provided their reasons why uh, they're overrated, and and how kind of like kind of basically that the community kind of takes for granted the fact that mana rocks are very good, but or don't really over don't really analyze whether or not they should be included in the first place. Um, and there were some really interesting points, and we thought it was a good. Uh, thing to talk about all right so we jump into wait no we don't jump into the topic yet. i keep forgetting it's like a, it's like a 50 50 basically on whether or not i will plug uh our merch store before we jump into the thing if you want to support the channel a couple different ways of doing that mtgoldfishmerch.com you can go over there buy deck boxes deck sleeves uh play mats t-shirts so much more over there and the other way you can support the channel is wherever you're listening to this podcast uh just do the equivalent of liking and subscribing wherever you're listening that helps the channel grow as well all right with that out of the way um yeah we're talking about mana rocks are they a scam first of all what do you think about uh this tweets and uh and in like your initial reaction like do you run uh mana rocks a lot will you stop running mana rocks what, what do you all think about that so should we first should we read the, the tweet for okay, context yeah, yeah. Maybe? That's, that's probably that's probably uh context is actually very good yeah all right i'm gonna read it really quickly and i'm gonna have uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I will have it also displayed, but whatever, I'm reading it. So here's here's the tweet thread that kind of spawns the discussion, and it reads as, as following. I'm going to answer this. I need If I'm going to answer this, I need to do it in its own thread to minimize repeating it. Mana rocks are a scam in Commander. This is a thread. Uh, people don't play enough lands, or land. I think the, the precons Watsi makes are about... Three to five lands short of where they should be. People justify not playing enough lands by playing rocks, but if you spend a turn playing a rock and then miss a land drop, it's really bad. It's much worse than you think because that early mana could have been spent on something that's generating value over time, and more importantly, the rocks are fragile, and losing mana at any point in the game is horrible. If you play creatures on turns 2 and 3 instead, you can be building synergies and generating political board presence. Even more importantly, fragile ramping is just isn't that strong. Because the payoff is that you're first to do the most threatening thing, but that means it's most likely to be answered because people haven't had a chance to use their answers. Unless you're ramping into something that's providing a resilient advantage, slow and steady is, fa- is far safer. Magic is huge and complex, and there's room for different decks that want to do different things, but people often... Talk to me about Commander with an assumption that more rocks equals stronger, and I think the opposite is true for most decks. So that is the context of the discussion. And there's a lot of discussion. It was retweeted a lot. A lot of people were giving their takes. It was kind of like the debate of of the Twitter sphere for like a good week. And, uh, you know, Brothers War and other things kind of made us talk about other stuff. But here we are. We're going to be debating whether or not Mana Rocks are, are, are kind of overrated and uh, need to be reevaluated de- depending on the decks. So, I mean, there's so much to dig through here in this. Yeah, we'll go point by point, I guess. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Tomer. What's what's point number one? What are we starting with? Well, I, I would start with the first part. Uh, people don't play enough lands. And then the follow up was uh, I think precons Watsi makes are about three to five lands short of where they should be. Um, people justify not playing enough lands by playing rocks and you spend a turn playing a rock and miss land drop. It's really bad. What do you think about people not playing enough lands in commander? What do you think? Well, first of all, like, what do you think like is the right amount of lands? And then like, are people doing that? So we've talked about this many times before and been yelled at many times before by the YouTubes who do not like to be told that they're not playing enough lands. I think that most commander players do not play enough lands. However, Mm -hmm. I think Sam's argument is that we also are not playing enough lands. I think uh, if you look at a commander precon, how many lands are there? 38, 39, somewhere in that range think, normally. Yeah, you probably right? So so I yeah, think that it goes up to 40. I think that Sam's thinking is deck should probably have like 43 to 45 lands if you're just like mm-hmm. doing the math based on this. I don't play that many lands. I play usually 38 to 40 lands when you include MDFCs. I think compared to most 
viewer submitted decks that I see that feels like a lot of lands, but maybe that's not enough. I was actually messing around with the hypergeometric calculator, and 38 lands in Commander is essentially 30 uh is essentially 24 lands in a 60 card deck so i'm assuming right. that's where that number comes from is people are like oh 24 lands that's like the arena default like if arena just tells you how many lands to play that's how many you play in a 60 card deck so i think people just mathed it out and went with 38 lands but maybe it's true that we should actually be playing more lands especially since there's so many good utility lands these days i saw a standard deck mm-hmm. the other day that had 29 lands which is off the charts for standard but then i looked at it and it was like a legend Legendary theme deck, and it was playing a whole bunch of channel lands. Like it had four Janos, mm-hmm. had four Atuaras, and it was actually really sweet deck building because you're never going to get mana screwed when you have 29 lands, but you also have all these spell effects attached to your lands. So I could see an argument that we're even playing too few lands, but I don't think you just want to replace them with more basic lands. I think you want to take advantage of like, if you're going to go up to 42 lands or 43 lands, I think you should be replacing uh, the cards that you cut with utility lands that can give you more value than just making mana. And like MDFCs? MDFCs, Castle Lockwains, Castle Ardenvales for Krim, Maze of Ith, like uh, things like that. Lands that are channel lands, lands that can also work like spells. (laughs) I mean, you gotta have a Urborg, but yeah, or a, you know, you know. <laughs> you have one, one specific Maya. card in your deck as well. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have Singleton. <laughs> I, I kind of like actually really like the idea of what, what the, like what Sam is presenting there. Um, I think the idea that, like, yeah, maybe you, you having more stuff to play early that aren't rocks does allow you to leverage a lot more political weight, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I do like a lot of what's being mentioned here. I mean, 43 lands is a lot, and it is something that I, naturally, I would jump with the YouTube comments like, whoa, whoa, hold on, I don't need that many lands, right? Mm -hmm. But when you start trimming rocks for it and why you don't, you don't necessarily need the rocks, um, I think it kind of makes sense. I, I, I kind of want to try it out. I want to try 43 lands, uh, 42 lands and see how it plays with less rocks because some decks flat out don't need it, right? Um, but they do need lands. Like, if I'm a deck that plays Collector's Oof or has tons of artifact destruction with Brotherhood's End just hitting the format, I want to rely less on rocks as I start adding more. Like, a red deck that plays Brotherhood's End, I'm going to want to blow up everyone's mana rocks since everyone's so heavily reliant on them but not affect it my, uh, affect myself, right? So I kind of really like the idea of not being so le- like leaning so heavily on Fragile Ramp. And Sam brings up a good point. I, I I mean, 43 is a lot, and it is a different way of thinking and looking at it in the game. But Sam's played a few games of Magic, and I, I believe Sam's pretty good mm-hmm. at Magic. So I would like to believe that, you know, maybe, maybe you know, like, yeah, like, it's worth a shot to try it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I never thought about it uh, in a way he phrased it. I think, so at first... He kind of had me there saying, like, yeah, people don't play enough lands. But then he told us that we don't play enough lands and we play more than the most people do. I guess I, what I'm trying to say is 43 seems a little, whew, a little yeah. heavy. I don't, I don't think I'd play 43 lands in my Omnath deck even. Be, uh, I don't know. But the his whole argument is kind of reliant on your artifacts get blown up every game which yeah but well if two they they, they oh and if you miss your land up. drops yeah right and missing yeah. your land drops yeah I, obviously i try to keep it not below 38 yeah you would sometimes miss a land drop and that's pretty much like uh, worse <laughs> than i don't know getting your mana rock blown up or something but if you play a mana rock on turn two and it gets you four mana or something until it gets blown up, that's if your commander can convert mana into card advantage, then you didn't get punished there. So I, I get where he's coming from and it's an interesting way to look at it, but I can't imagine it being correct over the course of many games. So I guess I mean, maybe it's just our play group, but. It's not Vandal Blast every game, at least for us. I definitely agree with Phil on this one. Like, 
Like I, I think Sam has Sam some has some really important points. Um, for context, in terms of precons, uh, he says the precons Watsi makes are about three to five lands short of where they should be. For context, because I do do a precon upgrade for basically every single precon that comes out, I know that they generally stick to thirty-seven to thirty-nine lands. Uh, the lowest they get, I think, is thirty-six. Is the lowest I've ever seen, and that was a Mishra deck. Uh, that came out recently, and I've seen a couple decks that have uh, been at, at 40 lands, but they generally stick, stick these days to exactly what my checklist for precons are that I post in every single thing, uh, which is 50 mana. So they'll have like 37 lands and 13 ramp, which is what I actually recommend to everybody all the time. Um, so that was just the context of that. But uh, going back to the mana rocks, I think, yeah, like you can't just think of like mana rocks like, oh, they're gonna put you behind. You're gonna you're gonna lose them eventually. Therefore, they're gonna be bad. But the I I think what you're ramping into is also very important. Like if you ramp into like a big card draw engine or into a bigger ramp engine or something like that, like you get your you get your big payoff out earlier. Then it doesn't really matter if your if your mana rocks get blown up afterwards. You've already gotten value out of them. Just like how I still will run like uh like a Birds of Paradise on turn one. Like, yes, I know that the Birds of Paradise will die. Like, I actually assume it will die to a board wipe or even maybe like a targeted removal spell at some point. I'm most likely a board wipe. But, you know, like the fact that I can turn one Birds of Paradise turn to put a three drop into play, maybe that could be my commander that's an, an amazing value engine or something like that. It might still be worth it, even though I will get shut down eventually. I might just get enough value that it was it was worth justifying, like the mana rock or the mana dork in that case. And I think that's kind of left out of the conversation. Wait, I, not, no, uh, no, 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 he does completely. lightly talk on that. Yeah, yeah, but he says it is a negative thing. I guess if mm-hmm. you are the first one to drop something, I mean, I can tell you, it's not necessarily a good thing to be threatening yeah. early in the game, but. It's you do the most threatening thing, but that means you're most likely to be answered when people haven't had a chance to use their answer. So you will be answered, but my my uh, rebuttal would be like, yeah, you will get answered, but you probably like depending on what you're ramping into, it might be worth it. If you're ramping into low power things, it's not worth it. But if you're ramping into something high power that has a big payoff, that even if you get shut down, I think it's still worth it. I think outside of the idea that we should probably play more lands which i can mostly Mm -hmm. agree with i think i disagree with basically every argument that sam makes in the context in the context of commander like i feel like i feel like the biggest thing that's left out is the fact that you have a commander because it talks about Mm -hmm. like oh you want to play something that has like generates resilient advantage or whatever like if you're ramping into that that's great otherwise like it's not great your commander is literally a source of resilient advantage that you have access to and if it dies you can play it again so like by default every single commander deck is going to have that right or like a huge percentage Mm -hmm. because that is like the very identity of what a commander is it's this repeatable source of advantage that you always have access to so i think that's like sort of missing from this i also think it's kind of funny that the argument of like oh your mana marks are gonna get blown up so instead you should be running out two or three drop creatures that that build synergies and generate a board presence because aren't those even the, more likely to get die. blown up like isn't the our yeah. creatures die as much or more than mana rocks and i think something else is maybe missing and I don't know how much Commander Sam plays. I know Sam is an amazing 60 card format, an amazing deck builder, like one of the best deck builders in the game's history, like blown away at his creativity and deck building. But I I also think that maybe this overestimates the odds of your mana rocks being blown up. It's not like Mm -hmm. it's not like a 60 card format where you try to like if you blow up your opponent's land, you're generating a advantage in the game because it's zero sum you have one opponent and you have another opponent we've had conversations about this about like someone plays soul ring on turn one do you spend a targeted removal spell to blow up that soul ring and it seems like a lot of times the general consensus has been no that you want to save it for a more important target later in the game because you have three opponents that you're playing against so just getting rid of an opponent's soul ring isn't necessarily going to swing the game that much in your favor so i think that some of the the specifics of the commander format that make it different than 60 card formats are maybe a little bit lost in in some of these arguments in my opinion i think the the more the bigger fear would be not 
targeted artifact removal, though, but it would be more like a Vandal Blast or an Austere Command, which you see pretty fairly often. That's And like that's, those things would take take out all your artifacts, and it would be more worth it. But they also, you're even more likely to run into the Austere Command or Supreme Verdict or Wrath of God or Damnation or Toxic Deluge that will take out the creatures that are being suggested <laughs> as the, the replacement plays for your mana rocks. Yes. If you play creatures on turn two or three instead, you can be building synergies and generating political board presence. I do agree with the board presence thing. Just having creatures on the battlefield means you can leverage that into who you're going to hit with them. And it makes it very unlikely that you will get hit. But still, I don't know if I would want to put a random two drop on the battlefield over a mana rock. So what I don't really get about this statement, and also, yeah, I just want to say again, big fan of Sam Black, <laughs> but uh, this, it kind of sounds, sounds like he doesn't value getting mana from mana rocks as value, because, yeah, you can put two drops on the battlefield that create value, like a mana rock that creates mm-hmm. mana, which is value. I don't know if I just play commanders that make... Like, if you... I said this earlier, if your commander is good at converting mana into value, like creates clues or something, then like you every don't... every commander that's been printed in the last like four yeah, years. <laughs> that you can like offset the value loss when your uh, mana rocks get blown up. Like I I, I yeah I I get where he's coming from, but it all seems like you can just by playing Commander, you, you you probably notice that Mana Rocks just give you an, a, like a, I can't mm. imagine a better two drop than just a Mana Rock <laughs> and maybe another one or <laughs> something like. Are there crazy two drops? Like for three drops, yeah. But usually my favorite two drop is a Signet or something. Well, Isn't I the, mean the most powerful two of... drops also just ramping? <laughs> like wouldn't yeah, that be like yeah. the best thing you can do but is just play a ramp spell? I think I think Lotus might be an example of something where I don't value two drops as much, for example, which is Phil's deck. Like oh, I, I, guess, I, I yeah, would I, don't I would much rather now, just drop obviously. down Lotus and focus on like one drop ramp yeah. over that, right? Because I want to ramp into loan well not ramp into Lonus, but like take advantage of Lonus. Like Lonus will be that two drop. I uh, I do not play mana rocks in Lonus. I do play mm-hmm. a Sol Ring, obviously, and I I'm not sure if I play Arcane Signet, but yeah, I do play like Lano Elves and stuff over this. But mm-hmm. that's because my commander is two mana. In if my commander is six mana or something, I I want to get there as fast as possible, and that's usually mana rocks or I guess fast seek or something where I, there was another thread where he talked about land ramp. Somebody asked how, how about rampant growth effects and these are better, but he said that's because people don't accept la- mass land destruction, mm-hmm. which is a whole sure. other can of worms <laughs> because there, there's actually a good question why you can blow up all the mana rocks, but not the lands. But yeah, so it seems like some like, does like rampant growth on turn two, which is better than a signet, I guess. I mean, yeah, like like yeah. rampant growth, three visits, all of those do feel like they're way less fragile, right? And also, it is exclusive to green, though, so that's the only thing. That was going to be my question. Like, I kind of view mana rocks as a necessary evil because commander mm-hmm. is like such a green heavy format, and green ramping is so powerful that I feel like. You have to assume you're probably going to, if you're just playing a random pod, you're probably going to be up at least against one person that's playing green. And with how popular green is, there's a good chance you'll be up against multiple people playing green. I feel like you have to play mana rocks to keep up with the people who can play the better ramp in the green decks, or else you just get so far behind. We've seen that on Commander Clash a million times, that the person with green just goes off and does so much ramping as casting those big haymakers. So in a perfect world, I think it's true that mana rocks are fragile, they're not ideal ramp or great ramp, but I think the nature of Commander and how powerful green is in Commander Unless we're going to change the norms of Commander and make Armageddon a thing, so the idea is going to be that you like can punish the green player for doing their land ramp thing, I think you just got to play them, or else you just can't keep up with the people who are playing the Rampant Gross and Far Seeks and Nature's Lores. 
So mm -hmm. what do you think about them just being a necessary evil where you have to ramp because the green player is going to be ramping and <sighs> and you won't win if you don't keep up mana wise? I mean, I ramp oh. just on my own. I'm not going to be yeah. threatened <laughs> by the green player into ramping, yeah. but there's, you could say this, yeah. It's funny that uh, green has... Uh, what's the thing that enters the battlefield and destroys all artifacts? Like, this is... Banner Banner progress. Progress. Banner, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Sam is probably pretty yeah. scared of this one then, but <laughs> I guess it's okay if the green player but, spends uh, that turn two, not playing a two drop and instead a rampant growth and then I, maybe something bigger, maybe ramp a little bit more and then just get some more value. Green is is very safe ramp, but I wouldn't I wouldn't discount artifact ramp as well because there's a lot of really powerful artifact ramp that's so strong that we even house banned it. Like we have Sol Ring, but we also oh, have he, Mana he, Crypt, so we just did, do not play. We have somebody, Jewel Lotus, so we do not play. I, I like, think addresses that as power. I yeah. think yeah. Sam yeah. excludes power. that in specific. Yeah. So that it's like, focusing on. Are, I think he specifically Casual. said about, like, two, or, two and, or three and... mana. I think he specifically yeah. answered in a reply, two or three mana rocks that make one mana is what sure. he's specifically referring to. So like sure. Signets, Talisman, Chromatic Lantern, like that that style of rock. So he don't know, okay. He but don't know, okay. He doesn't 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 would would you cut mana rocks from Amanatu? Like, I feel like I'm like. Well, I guess Amanatu's a three drops. So never mind. Yeah. But like, I feel like I feel like mana rocks and ramp in general just are so good when you're ramping into your commander, and like that's that's usually what I aim for, right? Like my commander is my value engine, is my is my everything engine. So I just want to get that out as quickly as possible and start getting that value asap. And I don't really care. If this, if my ramp gets blown up afterwards, I got my commander out. That was my that was my mission. So I don't know. I feel like I feel like it depends. Like I'll even I run mean, a Hedron archive in Kozlik just so I can get Kozlik out faster. My it, it, like in my Amanatu deck or any deck really. Like the point for me is I would probably rather guarantee that I get my commander out on time mm -hmm. and at all. Uh, then not hit the land drops, right? Yeah, and and just be stuck or be fragile to like something where somebody just does cast a, a lot of things now, just incidentally blow up artifacts, anyways, right? And mm -hmm. I've had uh, how many games have you seen where somebody's just like, well, this thing blows up two artifacts, I've got nothing else to target, so I'm gonna just target that random signet over there, right? Mm -hmm. And like that could set somebody back. So I think like what what Sam brings up is yeah it is really important to hit your lands and in in any deck especially something a, a deck like I would play is that I need to hit every land drop so I can sweep the board keep the board clear until I can mm -hmm. play my commander right because I'm not to use a planeswalker my planeswalker like, I don't want you to have a ton of creatures uh or or like yeah like I just need to make sure I get to the commander for sure and I'd mm -hmm. rather that than chance it on some kind of fragile artifact so. But I kind of like the idea of trying it out with without any of the mana rocks and just playing more lands. But Aminatu is but Aminatu <laughs> is also three mana. Like that's also right. like what if you're playing Edgar Markov or what if you're playing Madrolfa or uh, you know some five or six mana commander? Is it really like here? That's where this like really starts to boggle my mind. Is there any well, way like you don't game... cast them? So he's zero. Uh, he's zero. But I agree I, I mean, with Pick any five, six mana, seven <laughs> yeah. mana commander. Like, yeah. is it really practical that you can go land drop on one turn one, turn two, turn three, four, five, six, cast my commander and be in the game? I don't think that's how commander works. Like, I like uh. sure if you're playing Lannis or if you're playing a three mana commander. I can I can see that because you're going to make three land drops, but I feel like it's just too slow if you're not ramping into it. Like everyone else well, is going to have won the game by the time you make your six land drop and play your thing. Sam did mention though that it's not like every deck needs to exclude mana rocks. Uh, like the ones that mm -hmm. like it would make sense in some decks, right? And the decks that it would make sense in are like Dracoseth or something like that. Some seven mm -hmm. drop, uh, some some massive commander that you need to ramp up to. Then yeah. sure. It makes sense, but you should still play the rocks plus, uh, and, and like have a decent, a respectable amount of amount of lands, right? So, I, I I don't think like yeah, like some six drop, like let's just say Moldratha. I think you would still want to like play ramp, and in that situation, if you're in green, just rampant growth, 
right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to like a fragile rock. So I think there's almost a situation where like uh, the the argument is really that we do overvalue the rocks more Mm -hmm. like and I think we do. I think we do overvalue the rocks. And I, it, in that exact situation, there's imagine. there's plenty of fine replacements of ramping instead of using a rock. In Maldrotha, you can use, like, you know, okay, uh, ramping let, growth. But assume cultivate. you're not playing green. Assume you're not green. Like, yes, Some, if you're playing green, you have many options that are not mana rocks. But if you're playing red or blue or black, like... Isn't then, it yeah. mana rocks or bust, basically? Well, you you still can play mana rocks, right? Because the argument that his uh, like Sam's thing is that you should probably still be playing more lands, and that we overvalue mm-hmm. to the rocks. And I think we do. There's yeah. still, although it's still like that doesn't mean that because uh, like, that we shouldn't play any at all, though. Oh, and I, uh, I mean, in seven drops, like if your commander's a seven drop, it kind of makes sense there, right? That okay, sure, I need a little bit of extra help, so let's throw in some rocks on top of that. On top of playing more lands, I I think I think my major takeaway would be like like think of what your ramp is ramping into. What's the goal of this ramp? And then you can start choosing your ramp more appropriately, or start cutting ramp if it's not working towards that goal. Like if you're just putting in ramp cards for the sake of ramping, then I don't think that's going to be as effective. And it's also like the like like Krim said and like Sam says. Like, I think if you have a six drop uh, commander that you want to get on the battlefield and that's your goal, then two drop and three drop mana rocks make a lot of sense. Even if it's a six drop, then even a four drop mana rock can make sense if it's if it's one of the good ones like Thran Dynamo. <laughs> I think those are really good. Or or like, if you have like, I mean, I, I keep saying I... I run I run Hedron Archive and Kozilek. I think Kozilek's like eleven mana or something like that in Colorless. So I run Hedron Archive there. It's great. It's a great discard outlet for to counter a four drop. It's fantastic there. So like yeah, like I think some people will throw in mana rocks that don't really fit with with what the what the deck is doing. Especially I think like if it's like a two drop commander that you're trying to get out, then two drop mana rocks are not as effective as they would be in like say a four drop commander a four drop commander i think is perfect to have a two drop because i mean you're going to get your commander out on turn three i i think where i disagree is i don't think being the problem at the table is as big of a deal as like sam says it is like you shouldn't be the the problem at the table turn one like i get i get that but like i think the things that i'm trying to do are powerful enough that if you shut me down then i probably still got the value out of it and I but, uh, and I think you can make yourself the problem at the table by flooding the board with like, long term value generating two and three drop creatures anyway. Like yeah, if, if you're, you're start dropping dark anyway. confidants and stuff like that, I'm gonna view you as, and no one else is doing anything. I'm gonna view you as the biggest threat at the table, regardless. Mm-hmm. I would think. <sighs> but at that point, you're actually able to kind of back yourself up, right? Because yes. you got a bob. You have a. <laughs> well, I mean, if you got like, a, you, you have creatures you can and your opponents don't. Because <laughs> you're the one with something, right? And your opponents yeah. have nothing. Yeah, okay, and that's for one turn. But then mm-hmm. you untap with that mana rock and you play a five drop. And then you have yeah. something way better than that bob. So but, that's yeah, well, but, awesome but if you're if you're then loading your deck up with like what I, I, I've also mentioned that I think we could be playing more interaction. I traded my sure. three mana spell, like even or let's just in this case use murder. I traded my murder for your five drop. I love that. Yeah, so, but it it probably did something when it enters the battlefield or something. It probably just, did. Maybe it was a uh, Vivian, and I you just killed my beast token, and I still have the Vivian or something. It's sure. I still can't imagine anything better than ramping on turn one or two. That mm-hmm. seems like the best thing to do in the format. Like you spend way more. Assuming it doesn't get all blown up on turn three, you usually spend way more turns in the mid to late game where these mana rocks accelerate you and make you cast your spells. Like, I rarely have zero cards in my hand, so I can always use more mana. I was... So- mm-hmm. I was just going to say the same thing. I think I take issue with the idea that, like, if you're playing Lonus or Aminatu, you don't want to ramp. Like, I yes, ramping is maybe less important on turn one or turn two, but we see so many times. Uh, Tomer, you mentioned that, like, so many commanders these days generate card advantage. 
Mm-hmm. There are, have been very few commander games where I do a bunch of ramping and have like 20 mana or 30 mana or double my mana in some way. And I sit there and think, oh, no, I have 30 mana and nothing to do with it. What a shame. This yeah. is going to be a horrible turn. Like I'm drawing cards. I'm emptying my hand. I'm doing tons of big things like I don't. Isn't that wouldn't that be like, oh, Dockside is bad because what if you don't have <laughs> maybe you don't have mana to use the, anything to spend the treasures on? Like that would be a some shame. People, but that's just not how that works. Some people say Dockside is bad and casual, but I don't know. <laughs> that's just not how it yeah. works. Everything draws cards and generates value these days. Like mana is just never well, I, bad. I wouldn't say ramp is bad in Lonus, but I much more value one drop mana dorks, which there are like a lot of in Lonus I, over play, like the ramp and growth effect. I, and yeah. uh, inspiring statuary. That's probably I, the best yeah. in Lonus in I, particular. Yeah. But. I think if the argument is think about your ramp more, I'm totally behind that. If that's if that's the takeaway of this, I think that's a good takeaway. If the thinking is like people yeah. just go by a checklist, they put in 37 lands, then they put in 13 mana rocks, and they call it a day, and they do that every commander deck that they design, I think that's 100% right that that's that's probably not building your decks as good as they could be and it is easy to fall in that trap i think of just doing the default thing doing the checklist thing and we even like kind of talk about the checklist aspect so i think it's like i think it is worth thinking it through maybe my commander who would, who is... would write such a checklist on every well, single pre-con upgrade who would, what th- monster i think that checklist is like super helpful especially for people who are new to the format and learning how to build yeah. commander decks but then once you do that for a while and get to the next level of deck building i think that's where you get to the point where you're like okay like what specific ramp works with my commander or maybe i don't even need as much ramp with this specific commander or maybe this commander uh, i have a landfall commander so i'm going to play more mm-hmm. land ramp and no mana rocks or maybe i'm playing edric so i want a lot of mana dorks and no mana rocks and no land ramp so i think that mm-hmm. it is easy to fall into the to the trap of just building your decks the same way every time so if that's the takeaway from this thread i think that's a very positive one and one that we should Mm -hmm. think about more rather than just throwing the same 13 mana rocks in every deck because i think that is is probably not optimal i i have also one note to say about lands like everybody talks about like what's the right lane count and i know same same would want three to five more than the pre-cons so if we say the average of the pre-cons is like 37 38 then sam would be advocating like 32 uh, 42 43 um we this is actually something that you can actually use like math to help guide your decision process in terms of building and the only person that i know who does like like the, the phenomenal job in terms of breaking down the math is frank karsten and he's done a lot of articles over the years talking about how many lanes you should be running and also like how many mana sources you should be running. Like if you're in like a multicolored deck, like how many blue sources, uh, mana sources, the tap for blue are you going to need and stuff like that. You can break that down and actually find the objectively correct answer, at least for mana sources. Uh, but Frank also gives a really good insight on how many lanes you should be running. And I, I took this from uh, this year's update in terms of uh, running, building decks. And the quote that I got here is, a good formula for the number of lanes in your 99 card uh, card deck, counting MDFCs partially in this fashion, is, uh, here's here's the formula. I'm going to put the, the link to the article uh, in, in the video description is, 31.42 plus 3.13 times the average mana value of your spells minus 0.228 times the number of cheap card draw or mana ramp spells. The point is, uh, it says this means that if your average mana value is 3, which is fairly typical for commander decks, then you should start with 40 or 41 lanes and cut one lane for every 3 to 4 cheap card draw or mana ramp spells in your deck. Um and and so basically like let's say you have you start with like 40 lands and then you have four ramp cards in your deck you take out one land you can take out one land for that or if you have like one and two drop card draw spells um i think ponder also helps you like look for for the lands you need but like let's say like a sign and blood effect which is draw pay two draw two you can if you have four of those you can take out one land again so if you have like let's say 12 uh ramp sources you can take out three lanes from your number so you have like 12 ramp and 37 lanes would be something he would advocate for what does that line up with our our general deck building is that something that we would agree with in terms of like using that formula to our own decks or is that not really how we build 
have you run the numbers for other <clears throat> average mana values? Like, the end result mm. doesn't seem ridiculous to me, but I'm curious. I don't know. I'd have to run some of my decks through the formula and see how close I come out. I guess yeah. by that formula, I'm probably like a land or two short of what that would suggest most of the time, yeah. assuming my average mana value is around three. But I haven't actually like mathed out the average mana value of my decks and run it through the formula to see like how much variance there actually is there. Yeah, I can tell you like I look at mo- uh, on my deck list like on Moxfield and it just shows your average mana without lands, for example. And like my kicker deck is 2.74. So it's kind of close to three. Uh, and then I add, there's some weird ones, like Perforos is a sneak attack deck, so I'm basically just casting things for three mana, essentially. Uh, and so the, the, the mana value is a little bit wonky. But yeah, most of most of my stuff is a little bit under under three, and I would say I'm okay. like a mid-power on the higher end of mid with a lot of my decks. Yeah, so that, I mean, I think that sounds, I think that sounds realistic then. Wait, so then if you play 12 mana rocks, you can cut three then? So how many, uh, like how many rocks and draw spells? It would would be like start with, if you have a 40, if you have a three, three mana value average, which might not always be true, but if you do have three mana value average, if you have, if you start with 40 or 41 lands and you have, you add in 12 ramp sources, you cut three lands. Yeah, if I start it. 41 that's then usually I guess... where i end up with not but i i gotta say i usually start my deck with 38 lands throw in the ramp i always use in these colors and then build mm-hmm. my deck but i i'm not saying that's the best way to do it but it it is pretty consistent at least when? and i guess it it comes up at this number if you do Frank Carsten's math, so I guess it's fine. Wouldn't that line up with your checklist, basically, Tomer? Like, if you start yes. at 41 and play 12 ramp spells and you're minus 3, wouldn't that put you at, like, 38-ish lands, which would be roughly, like, a, a very, like, technical and mathy way to end up where we started? Yes. You know why? <laughs> because I based my checklist on Frank Carsten's math. <laughs> That's usually a good choice. Frank does, he does math for sure. I literally that's what so, I did like multiple years ago and I've been using that checklist for a, such a long time that it just like it always was correct to, it always felt correct to me as a starting point like obviously it's very different like like if I'm playing like a Tatyova deck which whenever you whenever a land enters the battlefield you draw a card I'm gonna run more rampant growth effects than than like 13 I'd be running more than that because I can turn that into card draw but like there's always there's always you know, tweaking from there. But yeah, that's where I got my checklist from was Frank Carson. So thank you, Frank. <laughs> so should we change based on the fragility of mana rocks? Like, is there an argument that if you're doing that same math and every four ram sources, you can cut a land. Should we be like, well, since it's a mana rock and someone could blow it up, I don't know, every whatever, six mana rocks, I can cut a land or something. Like, should we, should we take that argument of, Ah, mana rocks being fragile into account like are you going to change your your checklist at all based on the argument that we should play more lands and less rocks like is that ringing true at all for your your checklist and evaluation of free decks or anything no no <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't know i've played it off commander where the my mana rocks don't get touched or if my random rocks get blown up it's not like catastrophic for me you know like they usually get the value out of them. So I don't know. I feel like it is interesting, though, to try without mana rocks and just having a higher land count. As long as those lands are like channel lands or at least cycling lands, you know, like stuff that like if you to prevent mana flood, essentially. Um, I'd love. Yeah, I don't know. I'd love what to see how it played think? out. I would love to see yeah. how it played out. I will say that even though I'm not sure I buy all these arguments, uh, Sam actually posted a couple of his deck lists on Moxfield, mm-hmm. and I was looking through. Uh, I was looking through some of them, and he does back that up in his deck building. Like I think the most complete and recent deck is a Rafine deck, and it's forty five lands. And as far as I can tell, there is literally zero M spells in the deck of any of any kind in the Rafine deck. So when I look at it, it looks very weird to me as someone who is used to building commander decks in a certain way, but. I don't know, maybe maybe everyone else is looking at it in a way that's weird. It, it is jarring to me to see, like, an Elish Norn in a deck that just 
I guess is trying to make seven land drops and casting it. Like to me, it seems very, very unlikely that that'll actually work out in practice. But well, Rafine is usually a reanimator, right? Does he not have like reanimate effects? You can just discard Elish Norn very easily in Rafine. Uh, this I one does I don't have, I have that many. That is this. It has an burial rights. Uh, there might um, be like a reanimation spell, Holmes, but it's Dread not Return. like it doesn't. Oh, look this super is like fair magic heavy. dot deck. This is it, uh, I'm going to play <laughs> until turn seven and hard cast Elish Norn. Okay, it, it kind of right. looks yeah. like that's the plan. So Fair I mean, enough? there there are reanimation outlets. So I yeah. think maybe we should try it for a Commander Clash. I'm curious if people yeah. would want to see that. Like, would a no ramp week would, be appealing just to like put this to a test? Like, play yeah. more lands and play zero mana rocks and play zero ramp spells and just see what the game plays like. Well, the and true I mean, test is Sam is, plays nothing but like you know, like like lands and only a few utility lands. So we could mm-hmm. probably change it up to more MDFCs, utility lands. Yeah, but I think the true test would be decks without with high land counts and no ramp versus <laughs> decks that have you know like thirty seven <laughs> lands and thirteen. Because that's if we're trying to test out the theory, we have to actually put them against each other right and see how that goes and that's if you were just kind of like making some faces so yeah. you're not not a firm believer but I, I think it would be worth worth trying it out like we have to put the theory to the test properly yeah oh crim crim was intrigued let's play everyone yeah. versus crim everyone versus crim, I mean, with crim no, no ram let's <laughs> call it commander clash that's kind of... crim will also but... play this new uh what's the new anger of the god that blows up you Brotherhood's it. End. Brothers End. Yeah, that's, I mean, I was already going to play that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of scared about this. I think that's another aspect of it. Like, if your plan is, I'm not going to play Mana Rocks because I'm going to make sure no one can have Mana Rocks because I'm going to be playing Stony Silences and Null yeah. Rods and Brotherhood's End and Vandal Blast, and I'm trying to, like, stack Mana Rocks out of the game. That's probably a realistic plan, although... <sighs> Is that the green player, though. something Ooh, that geez. people are going to enjoy? Like, I will enjoy that. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I mean, you're going to enjoy it if you're the one doing it. But do you think, like, if that's the way Commander as a format trended, like, are we going to end up with people salty about not being able to use their their ramp sources? Just like people get salty about losing their lands if that was like an actual like normal thing that you ran into often in your casual Commander games? I think they already are. Uh, people are salty yeah. about Wrath of God. So yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. Probably the same remember the rocks. salt? Yeah, it's like one of the cards is the most salty, one of the most salty cards in the format. I don't know. I honestly, I most of my most of my games, my my mana rocks get blown up. I don't know. I never saw it as like, ah, I guess I need to take out my mana rocks. Like I, I'm in play groups where regularly there are board wipes and they oh, take sure. out my artifacts and stuff. But so. it's like turn seven or eight, yeah, and yeah. until this point they created five mana, so that's. Or I've and I've drawn like ten plus cards and I just rebuild. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Or reanimate them. I don't know. I mean, I'm on the other side of that where I never I I play forty lands sometimes mm-hmm. and I still don't get my lands. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the Chris gonna get uh, forty three. <laughs> I'm going up to like forty three, forty five. There's no way, right? There's just no way. There's I no think way. No wonder Krim wants to subscribe to this newsletter. I, I, Dude, I yeah, totally I, get I it. Yeah. Gone past three, like, I, I go 40 lands and still get stuck, so I don't I don't know. And I, think, uh, yeah. I definitely don't want to miss a land drop because I always fall behind yeah. because of that, right? So, Oh, that's a good point, actually. Like, missing a land drop is really, mm-hmm. really well. I mean, that's big news slash for every Magic player, but... It does happen occasionally on turn three or four in Commander if you get too greedy with your keep mm-hmm. because you thought, oh, I got a, I got a Signet and two mana. That's probably enough. And then you miss your third or fourth. These are probably the worst ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's got to give him, give that to him. You should probably try to avoid this. Um, well, you also want to avoid mana flooding too because that's also yeah, that, really bad. Yeah. But... Flooding, at least you have your commander in commander. Yeah. You can't, that like, is flooding isn't that sure, big of a deal. Yeah. You can always play your commander again. I guess that's also more of just, like, a more of a requirement that your commanders these days, like, you especially need your commander to be a card advantage engine. Especially. Yeah. Like, if it's, if, like, if, if you told me you must build a deck that has, like, 40 plus lands in it, 
I would say I would I would say I, I need a, a card advantage engine in my command zone then. Or else actually, I, I ran into playable. I ran into this problem for like I'm gonna play Titania next week for Commander yeah. Clash, and she has this exact problem where I play 40 lands, but yeah. also she doesn't draw cards, so I play mm. some weird spells and stuff drawing, that yeah. gets me something out of this, yeah. but. Like I, I play, I play Halar, and Halar doesn't draw cards by by itself. So I went above and beyond to make sure I'm running like all the draw X spells in green, because yeah, like I, I played with Esmond on Quintessential Commander, and I on one of the deleted videos, <laughs> I just ramped out, and my Halar just does not draw cards. It's not an engine by itself, and it doesn't really do anything by itself. So like, yeah, you gotta you gotta put a lot of card draw in that deck. And, We're going to go high lane counts. <laughs> and that might be one of the reasons that a lot of lands is works well with Rafine. I think that's maybe yes. another example of like thinking through what your commander does. If your commander and you're planning on curving out one drop, two drop, Rafine, conniving for three or four every turn, like you can play a lot of lands because you're going to be conniving through your deck and drawing so many cards that you can just loot away the ones that you don't want anyway. So I think mm-hmm. that it really, for me, that's the biggest takeaway. Like think through what your deck's trying to do and try to do, <laughs> try to do the best thing for, for your deck. Rather than being stuck in a, like, mana rocks are bad, mana rocks are good. Like, uh, think about what your deck's doing and what your commander's doing and build based on that. I have a question for the table. Mm-hmm. If if mana rocks being fragile is an argument against running them, would you say that we should value indestructible mana rocks higher than we currently do? Like, is it time to return back to Darksteel Ingots? No. Is it? Is it actually? <laughs> yeah. Skyclave relics. <laughs> where Skyclave relic was the only mana rock left after, like, uh, on the inversion or something. Yeah, and we do value it highly because of this, right? And because of the kicker part. But indestructible is certainly very good on mana rocks. That is, can't deny that. That's pretty good, and it was relevant a bunch of times already. So yeah. We should I mean, value it. not enough for Dark Stealing, it probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think Skyclave is good. I think the problem is the indestructible mana rocks outside of Skyclave are just not very good. And yeah. I think I'd rather take the risk of my Celestis or something, Warren Power Stone, getting blown up to play a more powerful, like, higher ceiling card than to play scared and like play a bad card mm-hmm. because I'm afraid someone's going to target my mana rock with a removal spell. Like I, I will, I will eat the removal spell if it means I get to like play a mana rock that does powerful, good things. Another question for the table that I had from this is, do you think this whole argument is too optimization focused? Like let's say that Sam's argument is right and you should play more lands and you should cut all your mana rocks for a lot of people isn't the reason that they play commander because they want to just like do these big flashy things even if they're not optimal and i feel like for a lot of commander players the goal is to like do this big cool thing and if you lose a few percentage points because you're playing mana rocks and ramping into your big things and sometimes you lose because you eat a vandal blast like in the long runs it's worth it if you're ramping into your big silly eight drop that I uh, whatever that you don't get to cast in any other format so I almost wonder if like even if it's wrong to play mana rocks and even if it's right to play 50 lands in your deck that it's just not what commander is about for most people because they don't want to get flooded out and they want to cast big things and they'll just mulligan 10 times until they get a good hand and then like do their big cool things I wonder like oh, Seth. <laughs> no, I, that's a Seth. weird I, that's a I guess a good point if you want to... I mean, we are on a podcast talking about yes. how to improve your commander. Yeah, I was going to say the self-awareness here. Yeah, because, like, but the, every once in a while, we'll get, like, somebody in the comment section who's just basically like, how dare you tell me how to play commander? Yeah. Yeah. Like, why are you, why are you telling we, us how to play the game? And yeah. we also like, tell people well, to play more lands. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you remember that. You remember yeah. that. So, yes, at, at some, in some extent, commander is the format where you play whatever you want, but I don't think... 
I don't think it's bad to discuss ways on how to improve decks and how to like think about choices in your deck building process differently than you otherwise would. I think having other opinions and having more to work with can just make you feel better. Like what if what if you're in a situation where your deck is not doing the thing you want it to do and you you need help or you want ideas on how to make it better and then you stumble on this idea of like, oh well if your stuff is if your mana rocks are getting blown up, why don't you just add more lanes and then your thing will do it a little bit slower, but it will do it more reliably. Maybe that will actually help people play the commander decks they the, the games that they want to play, right? So I, I the, the the idea of like ugh, we're not allowed to talk about ways <laughs> on on improving your deck because I don't know if people don't like being told what to do or something. It's like I, you don't you don't need to listen to us. It's just if if it, if it provides uh, if it provides a better game experience for you, take it. If it doesn't, leave it. You know, like I don't know. I, I think so, some people get mad at us. I got about commander. True. Nobody got mad. It was just a straw man, pretty much. But <laughs> no, no, no. People were talking. Part. People oh, got mad somebody, at us when we were talking about land sure. counts. <laughs> but the the weirdest part about this assumption is that the most optimized decks uh, is CADH, where you yeah. cannot not play mana rocks. Like, although yes. I guess he qualifies positive mana rocks as power so i guess you there's also guess. a lot of positive mana rocks in cdh right yeah like, like you like me. like two drop two drop mana rocks are not like super yeah. high on so the I requirement lift it's like the it moxin me, yeah. and the soul ring <laughs> and the mana crypt sure like so the then vault. scratch that yeah yeah i guess uh, but i don't think it's optimizing your deck if you just cut all the acceleration and the rest of the table just runs away with the game like imagine I still pretty much everything I say is the same thing, but two drop mana rock and then you play mm-hmm. a smothering tithe and yeah, that stays for two turns and then you have taken over the game and good thing the other guy just played the lands, but I, I think I think just... if you do go no mana rocks, you definitely have to increase the amount of mana rock hate in your deck because you're in a position where you can take advantage of it like brother's end i wouldn't run most of my decks because i don't have all my own mana rocks but like if i was in a deck that doesn't use mana rocks and i'm not in green then yeah i'm jamming brother's end right like you need to you need to stay you need to catch up to people who are ramping right and you need to to take advantage of your your strength which is i don't have any mana rocks therefore i can run mass mana rock destruction Right? Yeah, uh, I think that I think that is the upside of not playing mana rock decks. You can play the Bane uh, of Progresses or Brotherhood's End or something and and get away with it. Although you probably are. So I still every time we talk jerk. about this, You're I'm, jerk. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, why can't we Armageddon then? Like, if, if that's like how if that's our strategy for building commander decks, why? Why is Armageddon off limits? I'm coming you around. To the last somebody, you still have lands to cast spells. You just can't cast as much. I'm coming around to the Richard technique that, uh, or theory that Armageddon is just like unfairly on the do not play list, and that actually, actually, yeah, I, Commander would I'm probably be. be it's never going to happen. We're never. Uh, there's no way we're ever going to convince the community at large that we should start playing yeah. Armageddon's. Like it's it's exactly. a non it's a non starter. But I actually think maybe it's correct that Commander would be better if there was more of a risk of your lands getting blown up. <laughs> yeah, I Makes- I fully agree. So you got you got to keep people on their toes, right? <laughs> I agree with it, but it's just because people don't like it, therefore I don't run it. Like yeah. recently in Vegas, I took out Bearer of the Heavens for my Perforo stack because some I I lent the deck to somebody and they blew up they blew up all all uh uh, uh non land permanents or all the permanents of everybody except their own stuff, and then they promptly won the game. But like oh. somebody had a yeah, very fun, bad reaction to it. Really? But it's oh. just a yeah. win. It's it's the uh, same. Like yeah. No. Somebody just was like, "I screwed." Or something. And then yeah. they 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 apologized. They're just like, "I just don't like. <clears throat> I just don't like land destruction." Like but mass if the land game destruction. ends right away, then it's just like I know, oh, I know. <laughs> you can you can you can you can logic your way through it. But like, if people just yeah. don't like something, it's like, all right, well, you don't like it. Not so. I mean, I played <laughs> Land Destruction as a little kid, and I didn't know what I was doing, and my friends didn't want to play against this deck anymore, and I didn't understand why, but yeah, I guess I kind of understand why now. I'm fine with it, it, but like, if people don't like it, I'm not, I'm not going to try to argue with them that your, their opinion's wrong or something, I don't know. 
I don't know why you should have left Bear of the Heavens in. <laughs> no, I took oh, it out. Oh, in, in Perforos, yeah. I don't want to make on, people that's... feel bad. <laughs> that's what magic is all about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell them, <laughs> come on. When I now. play against you, Krim, I'll slot it back in, all right? <laughs> well, but I, what if I feel bad, Tomer? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and there it Good. is. <laughs> and Good. there it is. Good. I mean, in a way, you always try to beat your opponent and stop them from having executing too much their game plan or having yeah. too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> It is that, and I do like some good old everybody plays a gold fishing deck and tell me when you win the game, but <laughs> usually it's more interactive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll always kill your Lona's Phil. Don't you worry. Yeah. If, I, if I have a kill spell, I'm killing it. I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep trying to see if I can like like politic with Tomer, but I'm gonna feel bad, Tomer. You shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't <laughs> Good. Do that. I'm gonna feel and bad. And I'll just be Tomer. like, remember the time you opposition agents my cultivate? I, I don't remember. Did it did it feel bad? Because see, I would have felt bad if I didn't get to do it. So like, I, I you wouldn't want that, right? <laughs> I I have one me. more. I have one more mana rock question. <laughs> I have one yeah. more mana rock question. Something we haven't mentioned is the fixing aspect. Does that play into mm-hmm. this at all? Like a oh, lot of mana rocks help. are tapping for all colors mm-hmm. or all the colors in your deck. Most mm-hmm. lands are tapping for one or two colors. There's some rare exceptions like Triumphs that are three colors. And there's a few not heavily played City of Blast style lands that tap for all colors. But really mana rocks are the mana sources that are most likely to tap for all colors. Should that play into the equation all, especially with like three, four, five color decks? Like, I think maybe we just totally skipped over that. Outside of ramping you into big things, it's also making sure you can just cast all the cards in your hand. I had a note for that, and then I forgot to mention (laughs) it, so thank you so much. That's like, there's a couple mana rocks in general that are like very good for mana fixing, like Arcane Signet. And it's also, also if you're on a budget, too. Like, if you're a five color deck and you want to cast your spells on, on time, you can use mana rocks that mana fix very well that aren't that expensive arcane sickness under a dollar but the equivalent land would be like a mana confluence or something like you could have command tower obviously and exotic orchard but like the other really good mana fixing lands can can be pretty expensive so you utilizing both lands and mana rocks to mana fix even if you're not on a, a big budget can just be very beneficial to help you cast your spells on time so i think yeah, that's an excellent uh excellent uh thing to bring up is uh if you're in like a multicolor deck mana rocks can help that yeah i think that's true i think that is a uh, an underval uh, undervalued aspect of the mana rocks for sure hmm. i still wonder like if we do a week where we don't play ramp i don't know if it makes sense if that two people play with ramp, so but then the other ones can just play brothers at war. What was the? What was the? Uh, brothers at oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so the other ones can put in hate pieces, which might be fine. Uh, I'm st- I actually, even if the other decks play Bane of Progress and, and stuff, I'm still firmly on the side of the mana rock decks there. But I wonder what the best two or three that's one or two drops are if you can try to ramp like uh, that's is a pretty good wonder yeah Um, uh, i don't know we didn't we do a thing on like no we didn't even do like creature tier list did we (laughs) i i think we're gonna do a a one drop tier list in the future we were just talking about yeah. the possibility of doing one drop tier list maybe there's some one drop the best cards are gonna be ramp cards i mean <laughs> ramp yeah. cards there there's are some other ones what's a what's a green one that you can sack a land to give shroud like that one sylvan safekeeper is pretty good Ugh. mother yes. mother I... of runes esper sentinel there i think if we dig around we'll see that there's actually some good non-ramp one drops so, so many things that die to on board ramp, wipe, right? i don't understand i mean all everything dies to board wipes these days we live in the world I know, of fairwell everything we live in fairwell austere, <laughs> wait, why do rocks <laughs> die to austere command why do i <laughs> having creatures instead no Sam that. said that uh, oh, mana ro- dogs are actually beneficial because you can they can wear equipment and stuff, which is a pretty good point. Yeah, I don't play equipments, yeah. but uh, 
a Birds of Paradise with a sort of fire and ice does a lot more than a ramp and grow on turn eight or something. But yeah, it also depends on the deck. Like you're just saying a deck that has inherent mana dork synergies yeah, is better than one that doesn't like ramp that doesn't have synergy. But like same thing with ramp and growth, right? Like if I'm Tatyova deck, then that benefits me. Or if I'm I'm like a teamer spell slinger, then a ramp and growth is better than a mana dork. It just like depends on the context. Yeah, which which I, Sam does mention. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. it always does. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, I think I, that's I, a good takeaway. It's like pick. Don't just throw in the same ramp over and over again. Think about what what ramp is actually best for you because it is a, 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 a an awesome way to customize your deck. Like a lot of people just say, like you know, like half the deck is already predetermined because it's like lands and ramp. But no, you can actually customize your lands and ramp to to be more optimized or more interesting and more fun based on what the rest of your deck is doing. Yeah. I think that's my takeaway too. Just, just think about it when you're deck building Mm -hmm. instead of, uh, just doing the same thing every time. I was also going to say, I kind of wish Richard was here this episode because I think when you're talking about this thread, uh, just as a goldfish staff on discord, Richard was the one that was like the most in agreement with it, I think. And I think if you think about how Richard plays commander, it kind of backs up his like play style too. So I think like uh, it would be interesting to to hear Richard's take on this because he was like, "Oh yeah, like this this really rings true to me." So Richard is like beating people up with fledging yeah. Osprey. So like this is literally up his alley. Yeah, like what's he what's he got a ramp I mean, for? He's playing. One don't be the main threat. Yeah. He's proven that though, right? Yeah. He, he's he's kind of that, like yeah. in, in, in yeah. theory, right? Like like yeah. he's never the major threat. He just plays a bunch of cheap threats that aren't exactly the most like threatening yeah. so he's always dodged aggro and yeah. he has like actual body presence to like politic with mm-hmm. as opposed his- to like the card we don't know if it's actually in your hand right like i could sit here hey i may not kill your thing or i may not counter your spell sure but richard's on board with a, a threat you can see and it is yeah. going to kill you so i mean and it does it not this- make sense yeah. This is Richard literally probably like convinced me spirits talking. somehow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because it's the same with Sam's argument. It sounds it sounds like there's some truth to it, but the more I think about it, the more I think, yeah, I still kind of want to have my two drop mana rock <laughs> and then play a four yeah. drop, maybe no. two two drops and then next I, turn. Whew. Yeah, no, no, it's like, like, I, party it's, time. it might be a, it might be a good strategy, but I don't want to play jank. Bird tribal yeah. deck. I'm sorry, Richard. Like I don't want to play. I don't want to play Kith control. I don't, I don't know if the game plan is to walk away to playing birds, but you know. <laughs> well, just play like like below curve one and two drops and try to win the game on it. It's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Make, make I your lost cards birds yeah. so hard. Make yeah, your cards so bad, no one wants to kill you, survive it's forever. It's a good strategy. It, it's I'm a great strategy. strategy. Oh, it's it does. So but it's like, it's like queuing up for, like, powered cube, and then you just draft mono, mono red all oh, the yeah. time. Oh, like, God, okay, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it wins. I'm going, like, okay. 3-0, and oh, but... you know, again, we did it, we did it. <laughs> Do I feel <laughs> good about it? Yeah, yeah no, no, it works, fun. but, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather die casting my mold drifters, I think. I'd rather just win with a fledgling Osprey. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd rather just fail playing a half baked storm deck each time. Like, come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I don't win, but it's funny. Uh, we'll have to do another cube stream uh, this holiday season, Tomer. That'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, I guess we can wrap it up here. What are what what do we take away from Sam's tweets? What do we take away from our conversation? What's like the biggest? What is the biggest thing that we're going to be changing in terms of like our next decks and stuff? I got, I got at least two. Number one, I am going to play more lands. Uh, I have not mm-hmm. been convinced to go to like forty three to forty five lands, but in my entire history of playing Magic, every time I add an extra land to one of my decks, the deck runs better. So I think that Sam is probably <laughs> right that I mm-hmm. should be playing more than I am now. So I, I don't think I can jump all the way up to like forty five lands. Not yet. Maybe I'll get there eventually, but. I'm going to I'm going to try to get up to like 40 41 and like it slowly work that direction and see how it feels. Uh although I'm still going to play Mana Rocks. As far as the Mana Rock take number 2, kind of what you said and what I said earlier, just think about your commander. I think even it's you know, us too as we build decks every single week. Sometimes it's easy to just like have the 
you know, 10 or 13 mana rocks that I know are good and want to play, and I throw them in the deck every time, but think through it more based on what your deck's trying to do and what your commander is. So I think for me, those are the the two big takeaways. Yeah, for me, it's the... I might play another land, but it's just because I respect (laughs) Sam Black's opinion, and it sounds like if he says... 43, I could at least add that 39th land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's, I, it just feels like, yeah, maybe I should play one more. And yeah, missing a land draw is actually very devastating. And you usually have enough action with your commander. As with everything about commander, always see what your deck does and decide afterwards. But... In general, I might add one more land. We'll see. They're still <laughs> I, uh, gonna keep those mana rocks in there. No, no one's gonna talk Phil off of his ramping. I know that. I knew no. that going into it. That's that's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> I, I'm definitely gonna try adding up, go up to 42, and like I, I want to see what it's like just to try it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really do want to just give it. Uh, like, sure, we've had rocks all this time, uh, and and I've increased my land count. I haven't had any better luck. So why what, what's going to happen? Am I going to be stuck on three lands still? Then okay, nothing. What's changed. the worst that could happen? Yeah, like what's yeah. the worst that could happen? I may as well try it. I I like the idea that we're challenging, uh, just you know, basic like you know deck building, right? Like what the mm-hmm. normal thought process. I like that we're challenging that, right? So yeah. I'm always down to do the thought experiment. So at, at like worst thing that happens, you know, like okay, cool, nothing's different. It's the same. Then whatever, I tried it, but. Maybe there's something there's something to be uh, learned from this, so I can't wait to t- give it a shot. I'm yeah, I'm not gonna change much, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> no, we almost, no, I mean we I'm almost all learned something. I have like ten decks. I'll reevaluate some of them, especially the older ones. But I definitely agree. Like you know, just throwing in a mindstone or a signet in there just for the sake of having a certain quota met. It's probably not worth it. It's it's important to critically look at the mana rocks in your deck and see if if they're if they're doing what they should be doing, or you should be replacing them for lands or what. Like you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of ramp options out there that will generate a lot of mana, and therefore they are worth it. But there's some that are just like you know, you put it there because you're like, I need to have X amount of ramp, and I think that's that's worth it. Like I made a gig deck, a budget gig deck, and it's like 35 lands. And it has like f- maybe like five ramp cards, and the ramp cards are are only picked because they're very very good in the specific thing it's doing. But the deck is like all one drops. It's all black one drops. Like a man- mind stone is actively bad in this version of of my deck. So you know, like I I think applying that for every deck is kind of important. Like just trying to optimize the mana base of your deck and trying to make sure that your deck pops off is good so i like i really like the the tweets i thank you sam if you're listening for opening up this discussion i think it was really good um and yeah just if you're thinking about it too don't don't, we're not telling you how to play the game or anything it's just a different perspective so don't be don't be mad (laughs) please I but you, I can subscribe. But you really should play even, more lands, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think Lots about the out. the idea of reevaluating your already existing decks. <sighs> I think the idea of looking at your deck and saying, "I'm going to take out a spell and put in a land," that is not going to happen. That's going to be a <laughs> mental crisis <laughs> if I'm sitting here <laughs> having to cut a spell and then ooh, put a forest in there. That is never going to happen. Is it not <laughs> easier, I'm... though? Like, after you... Like, it's really hard when you build the rough draft of the deck. You're like, okay, there's, there's like 120 awesome cards I want to put in this deck. And you're squeezing it down to 100. And you're like, ah, I guess I'll yeah. take out lands. I don't I need it. But then you play it a bit. Rounds, and you're yeah. like, well, I, I'm getting mana screwed every single game. And also these cards I'm never even casting. Or I see them in my hand. I don't want to cast them. Then you know, like, okay, now now it's easier after you play the game yeah. to be like, all right, I'll take out these and put out some lands. Oh, but put it in the hand. Ooh, that's, I'm not that's, sure if I could do that. Or you put in some other sweet, sweet thing. <laughs> that's, <jam. yeah. laughs> that's where MDFCs come in. It's yeah. a way you can trick your brain into being okay with adding a, yeah. an extra <laughs> land to your deck. Yeah. 
I, I even now like like I'm starting to see the uh, the appeal of like Zumpf consumption and yes. <laughs> no, yes. yes, it's a land that sometimes <laughs> does a thing. It doesn't it's feel a, like a land. It's a bad tap land that could have been a swamp. It could have been a nice saying, untapped swamp. I'm starting to understand it. Like, I, I, at oh first, god, I don't know if there's a like. There's almost no MDFCs I wouldn't play in 2022. Oh, <laughs> Honestly, MDFCs are kind of the answer for this whole problem yeah if 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 we go by oh he did count mdfcs with this and you just put five mdfcs in your deck yeah. plus mm-hmm. 38 lands then that's uh, you can also play mana rocks if you yeah. want to and still don't miss your land drop so and yeah mdfcs I, are just amazing <laughs> it's and, quite obvious at this point and there's a lot of mdfcs uh, that are just good effects yeah. too i don't even know if you have to reach down all the way to Zoff consumption no, like, probably not like, is it, is it, are you gonna be sad that sad that you ran like balagate recovery Valakid awakening malachia rebirth you know the good ones onto inversion off consumption and it keeps getting no. easier because we're also getting channel lands we have the castle yeah. like it seems yeah. like every couple of sets wizards is printing some really good utility lands. so i think yeah. we're having less and less of an excuse to not play more lands because the lands are just so good now it's not 1995 when it's all going to be you know a bunch of basic lands that do nothing and you'll flood out and you get sad like you can play lands that are also like spells so take advantage of it yeah also i guess I guess it's also important to note this is not for CDH. Like CDH no. is its own beast. No. So Definitely I know not. there's always a comment section to being like, you know, like my CDH deck runs 25 lands, and you know you're all wrong. Like you're crazy that you would have more than 30. And, and like, yeah, I mean that that probably might be valid in, in CDH. Even though I, I've been noticing also on this, there's there's like a like a people are always arguing number of lands for cdh i think it has to be lower just because you are running like the zero and one drop mana rocks which are just strictly better than lands <laughs> when, yeah. they, when they become that good and they also, also like, add two mana yeah and also the amount of land drops you need to do throughout the game is lower too because i think on average i think the average game on commander is like 10 but then the average game on cdh is turn six so there's just less turns that you need to make land drops for and so, your curves lower, and you're probably and your putting all the lower. cheap hand trips, and half your spells are free spells. So, but that's so not saying that you should run. It's different, yeah. and you should still use math to help determine how many lanes you run. Maybe if you check out the Frank Carson article, it literally compensates for you know average mana value, turn count, and all that stuff. How many how many cheap card draw spells that you need? Still use math. Even in CDH. Probably especially in CDH, actually, if you want to win. <laughs> Just saying. The math is there. Anyway, um, that's our show, everybody. Hope you enjoyed our little discussion on Mana Rocks. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content. Uh, merch store. MTG Goldfish merch. So it's good if you want to give us monies. Um, and we're going to be back next week with, a, a, I don't know. We're going to figure it out. But it's going to be a topic, and it'll be a podcast, and you're going to be here to listen to us talk about stuff. Yay. All right. We'll right. probably tell you Bye. how to play play more lands, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Every, that, that always goes we're, so we're well. We're going to do that every episode. Episode. So well. every episode Somebody until you start us. doing it, viewers. <laughs> we're going to keep reminding you. God. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Yes. Love y'all. Yeah. All right. See ya. Bye. <laughs>